Okay, so we've got her all set up. She's up and running. I've made a little bench for it to go on so we can muck around with it a bit. Now, if you had asked me about this setup before, I would have said, what a lot of crap. But um, after a small amount of playing around, I can see some potential in this setup. So we'll run through it quickly. 24 volts, um, our on-off switch, 24.5 volts in the batteries at the moment. They are a bit down there, old ones I've been trying to recondition. They are starting to come back quite nicely. But they do drop a bit quicker than normal, so that voltage will come down. Our amp gauge, going into the motor. I know it's going to be hard to get an accurate reading off it, but um, I don't have a amp gauge um, in the digital type. It'll go up to the amps we want to pull from the motor. Of course our 24 volt motor and our generator. So I have been playing around with it a little bit. It had this cap on the um, generator to start with, which is a 12 UF AC cap. And I changed it around for a 24 UF AC cap and what that done was it gave me more output but the draw on the prime mover came down. So I jumped the uh, 12 UF to give us a total of 36 UF and um, we got even more output and our amp draw didn't go up. So still plenty to play around with here tuning the um, generator. I think when you buy these things they just chuck them together so they work, they're not really worried about how efficient they are. So we're coming out of our generator and I'll just put this loop of wire on it so I can get our um, clamp meter on there nice and easy to get some sort of um, amp reading. Um, I have a feeling the magnetic fields may play around with this a little bit. So that's why I put the extended wire on, try and get it away from it. Um, and you certainly do, if I hold it down here, we'll get about 2 amps coming out. If I put it up here, we get about 300 milliamps. So definitely magnetic fields play a part because that's how these things actually work, a clamp meter. So we're coming out of our generator, going into here, a little chalky blocks which this meter is hooked up to to show us the AC voltage and then we're going through this block here which is my heavy duty full wave bridge rectifier and we're coming out of the positive side now this aluminium is positive and negative so we can't be touching that while we're working and we'll have to put a cover over it but we come out of the positive side and I'm going into the positive side of a um, another battery I'm trying to rejuvenate. We then come out of the negative side of that battery, go through the light bulb and then back to the negative side of our four wave bridge rectifier. So what this does for me now is not only can we run a light, we can charge the battery and I have a very good battery desulfator. Fully adjustable. The bigger the battery higher the wattage globe I put in there, stronger the pulses go into the battery. So we're getting around 200 volt pulses at 70 hertz, so that's not too bad at all. Um, that battery is 11.89, doesn't seem to want to take any more than 12, 12.1 volts, no matter how many days you leave it on for, so I haven't started up with this battery on yet. That's at standard voltage for the last um, week. So um, that's rested well. We'll see what happens with that battery. So first we're going to start her up and we'll get a amp draw of the thing free running without any load on it. We will then put the globe in the hole, put a load on it and have a look at the amps again. Oh. 
that. Now we're going to put the load in. itself will be consuming most of the power but we certainly don't want to be touching any one of those posts while this thing is running for that at any block. So 199 volts